Hello, my name is Paul Miners. Welcome back to another one of my pipe drive training videos. In this video, I want to show you how you can connect your Google, Microsoft, or any IMAP supported email account to pipe drive. This is a really useful feature because it allows you to send and receive emails natively inside of Pipedrive, which makes following up with your leads and your different sales opportunities that much quicker and easier. I will also show you some other features like email tracking and email templates that make it really easy for salespeople to follow up more effectively and close more deals. Now, if you have any questions at the end of this video, please feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you would like one-on-one -on -one help with setting up optimizing your Pipedrive account, or maybe even automating parts of your sales process, then click the link in the description below to learn more about my Pipedrive consulting options. Now, before I go too much further, I should explain that to use the email sync capabilities in Pipedrive, you do need to have at least the advanced subscription. This is the subscription that comes with email sync capabilities. It's also gonna give you the ability to send group emailing and even do email automation. And I've actually got another video where I show you how to do email nurture inside Pipedrive. So definitely check that out. If you're only on the essential plan, unfortunately you are gonna be limited to only being able to BCC emails into Pipedrive. Before I can send or receive any emails in Pipedrive, I need to connect my email account. So I'm gonna to go to my personal preferences and then down to email sync. And from here, I can connect a Gmail, a Microsoft 365, or any IMAP supported email account. So I'm gonna click the add new account button and type in my address. Pipedrive should recognize what email hosting provider you are using. So in this case, I'm being redirected to Google. If you use Microsoft, you'll be re redirected to the Microsoft login screen. Or if you're just using an IMAP supported address, you will have to provide some IMAP details. And so now I'm just gonna go through the steps to authenticate my Gmail account in this case. Now, before I start syncing, there's a few choices I have to make. I can choose whether I want to do a full sync with my email account, and I can choose to sync all emails with any Gmail label in my case. And that would just mean that every email I receive appears inside Pipedrive. Or I can choose to do a partial sync where I can select to only have certain emails that have certain labels in Gmail appear in Pipedrive. Or if you're a Microsoft Outlook user, you can choose what folders you want to sync to Pipedrive. To keep this simple for now, I'm just gonna do a full email sync. And I can choose how far back do I want to start my sync from. I can start from a couple of days ago, a month, three, six months, or even up to a year ago. Once I'm happy with these settings, I can just click Start Syncing. Of course, depending on how far back you've chosen to sync from, it will take a bit of time for your email to populate inside Pipedrive. From here now, I can customize it or change a few other settings. I can check, I can change my sender name. So I'm gonna put in here Warwick Palm. I can also choose a couple of settings regarding how I want archived and deleted email conversations to appear in my email host. So if I archive in Gmail, in Pipedrive, I can have the email archived in, in Gmail and the same with deleting emails as well. I can also choose whether I want to, by default, apply open and link tracking to my emails, but I can turn that on or off at the email level if I need to. A couple of other settings worth pointing out. Firstly, don't worry too much about the Smart BCC. If you are using the email sync with Pipedrive, you don't really need to use the BCC feature. If you're on the essential plan, uh, you this is the only way to get emails into Pipedrive. But yeah, if you do the full sync, this isn't really required. You can choose to block certain email addresses if you don't want those appearing in Pipedrive. And if we go to the general tab, um, there's a few options here worth checking. Firstly, you can choose the privacy of your email. So by default, uh, you can keep all of your email private, uh, or you can choose to share any linked email conversations with other people in the company. And as you can see here, a shared conversation is only visible to users if it's linked to a contact, a deal, a lead, or a project inside Pipedrive. Now again, this is the global setting, but you can override the email sharing for an individual email if needed. I often recommend just defaulting your email to private, better be safe than sorry, and you can share individual emails later. And then finally, I'll also recommend leaving the link items selected to automatically. 
What that means is if you email someone and you have a deal open for that contact, Pipedrive is going to automatically link that email to a particular deal. Now, just to further clarify this point, because I often get asked about how the automatic linking works, what happens is when an email is received, let's say a client or a customer emails you, Pipedrive looks at the sender's email address, and if it can find a deal open that's linked to a contact with that email, it can link the email to that particular deal. Now, this email linking can fail in a couple of situations. Number one, if you don't have a deal that's open, if the deal has already been marked as won or lost, Pipedrive won't link the email to a won or lost deal. Or if you have multiple deals open for a contact, again, Pipedrive doesn't really know what to do. It doesn't know which deal the, the conversation is associated with, so you have to manually link that email to the appropriate deal. Once I'm happy with my email settings, the next thing I'm gonna do is set up my email signature. So to do that, I'm gonna go over to this mail tab here and I'm gonna start a new mail message. And if you click this little squiggly line icon, I can open my signature settings. Now, I have had clients run into issues with this where if you just copy and paste your signature from your email right now into here, it doesn't paste in that well. Sometimes formatting can make it look a bit funny. I usually recommend just creating your signature in here from scratch and you can bring in images and logos. You can put links and all kinds of things in here to make it look really nice. You can add images and logos by clicking the ellipsis and you can add images here. There's also a link option. So if I want to uh, select some text like this, I can then choose to add a link and I might put in my uh, Calendly booking link here and once I'm happy with this, I will just click save. And now this automatically gets appended to any email that I want to send. From here, I can also set up email templates. And this is one of my favorite features because when you're selling, you often use the same script or templates when it comes to getting people to book calls, following up, sending quotes, proposals, things like that. So you can have a template ready to go and it makes just doing your sales follow up so much quicker and easier. So if I go to manage templates here, you can see some that I've already created. Or to start a new one, I'm gonna click add new template. And I'll give this a name, just uh, intro to new lead. And I can say, um, what I can do here is maybe I want to populate the subject line with the name of the lead because I want it to appear really personal. So I can actually insert a field here and I can insert custom fields or information from my contact or my deal. So if I go to this person icon, I can insert the person's first name, book a call with me it's in my subject, and then I can type the body of my email. And again, I'll open with the person's name. Uh, thanks for reaching out. Please book a call with me here. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually not going to put my signature into this template. Instead, I'm just gonna sign off and I'm gonna leave the signature empty because what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna share this template. I'm gonna let other people on my team use this same template. And so I don't wanna put my signature in here because then it would have my information. Uh, so I'm gonna leave it like this and that way, if somebody else on my team uses this template, their signature gets added instead of mine. And so I'm gonna save my template now and it's ready to use. And so when I'm ready, I can send an email from inside a deal. So here's a deal, I have a deal open for Bill Gates. I can click the email button up here. And so I'm sending the email from inside this particular deal, which means my email and the response that Bill sends me, all of that is gonna be tracked inside the deal and I've got a complete history of our conversation all in one place. So I've started my new email and I'm gonna choose that uh, intro to new lead template. You can see it fills in with Bill's name and I can, I can edit this first if I want to add some additional text. You know, I can put in some, some text if I want or I can add attachments and things. Before I click send, I can choose if I want to track the email, uh, whether it's been opened or not, and I can choose whether to track link clicking. So in this case, I'll be able to see if Bill has clicked my booking link or not. Once I'm ready to send, I can choose to either schedule this and send it later at a preset time, or I can just hit send. And so the email is still being sent through my Gmail account. And if I go to my Gmail, I can see this email in my sent items, but I'm just using Pipedrive as the email client to compose the email in the first place. 
Once the email has sent, you'll see the email down here in your deal timeline. And I can open it and see via this little icon here, if the email has been opened, how many times, when it was last opened, and I can see which links in the email have been clicked, if any. So this one here has been clicked, but this one hasn't. So as a salesperson, really useful way to know if people are opening and engaging with my emails. Once I get a response from the lead, you can see it automatically comes into the deal here. So I can open it and I can read it. And if I want, I can just hit reply and I can continue the conversation right from inside Pipedrive. Now you can also uh, see your inbox here on the mail tab. So at the top here, this is where I can see that incoming email. So I generally make it a best practice to kind of check that inbox a few times a day. On the right hand side, you can see that this email has been automatically linked with this deal because I only have one deal currently open for Bill. So Pipedrive is able to link this to the deal. But if I didn't have it linked, you can actually see here it's suggesting potential deals or I can search for a deal and then I can manually link this conversation to a deal if I need to. From the inbox, I can also see which of my emails are still private, which is my global email setting. And I can choose to share particular emails with my team if that email is linked to a contact or a deal. Now, if you want, you could actually do all of your email from within Pipedrive if you want. You can work on that mail screen to see all your incoming emails. You can send emails from inside Pipedrive. You can manage all the responses. And if you want, you never have to open Gmail or Outlook again. However, most of the clients we work with still prefer to use Outlook or Gmail just because it's what they prefer, it's what they're used to, and there's no problem with that. I actually use a mix of, I use Apple Mail on my computer, which is where I answer all my you know Gmail email and I work primarily from my normal email but because I have email in sync with Pipedrive even though I'm working inside Gmail, Outlook or Apple Mail you can still see those conversations appearing in Pipedrive as well. Sometimes I'll just be on a deal and I'll actually find it a bit quicker to just click reply from an email within the deal. I can use a template. I can have that email be tracked as well. So I actually do a bit of both in terms of sending email from Pipedrive or using my regular email. If you want to take your email follow up to the next level, I'm going to link up here another video that I created where I show how to create email nurture sequences inside Pipedrive. So definitely check that out. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to post me a comment below. And if you want help setting up or optimizing your Pipedrive account, again, check out the link in the description below. I'd love to chat with you. One more time, thank you for listening, and I will see you in the next video.